Welcome to Bridgeway's online campus. My name is Dan Taylor, and I'm an associate pastor here at Bridgeway Community Church. And today, our senior pastor is finishing up a sermon series entitled Threshold. If you have kids, our children's ministry has created a service especially for them, and you can find that at bridgeway.cc forward slash kids. Let's pray for the service. Jesus, you are so good to us. And we see that goodness in the story that you are writing on each of our individual lives. So we pray that you will use this service as another demonstration of your goodness to us. That you will hear our prayers, accept our worship, and that you will shower your people with your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So wherever you are, Stand and join us together as we will worship our God, Bridgeway. Desperate for you.
As a country, we are in shock, we are saddened, and we are grieving because of a shooting that took place at an elementary school in Texas this past week. And so we thought it would be appropriate for us to create a moment in our service where we, as the people of God, can open up our hearts to God during these difficult circumstances. Father, we come to you with jumbled hearts filled with questions and emotions that can overwhelm us when events like these take place. And so, God, we come to you and we ask you to meet us here, that you can hear the laments of our heart, that you can soothe the questions that are unanswerable in our heads and our hearts. But as Job said, God, more important than anything else, we need you. We need your presence. So God, will you come? Will you come here with us in this community at this moment when we need you? In the name of Christ we pray, amen.
We trust in Jesus Christ as our healer, and we speak faith when we say we believe that he can do it again. We also realize that even late in the midnight hour, there are people who are in their beds crying because of the loss of a loved one that was torn down because of a gunman who decided he wanted to do something evil. And in these sad days of destruction and death, the using of bombs, and guns to kill people in Ukraine or in Buffalo or most recently in Uvalde, Texas. Our hearts go out to you and we just want you to know that we're thinking about you, we're praying for you as children are dying, and parents are crying, and all of us are grieving. We so wish that there was more that we could do and I'm asking God to give us wisdom as a country on how we can deal with uh, people who have access to guns to buy guns at age 18, but you can't buy cigarettes. There's something wrong with that. Not that I'm saying I want them to buy cigarettes, but we can send you off to war to kill people, and yet you can do that at age 18, but you can't buy a beer. There's just something wrong, and I think we all know it. We just need the wisdom of God to figure out how to slay this demon. So part of my message today is to talk about how do we as believers walk in the authority that God has given us. There's going to be evil on the earth. There's going to be problems and troubles in the world. But God has called us to live a kingdom lifestyle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bow for a word of prayer. And then we're going to finish today's, this series that we've been in today uh, called The Kingdom Doors. The name of the series is Threshold. And it's been a five-week series. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, as we have spoken for five weeks on the different doors, the only door, the open door, the shut door, and now, uh, in last week, the covered door where we talked about the blood of Christ that covers us. And now we're going to pray that God would cover this message. Would you bow with me as we talk about kingdom doors? And Jesus, now as we go into your word, we pray that your word would go into us Teach us, God, from the scriptures. Help us to walk in the authority you've given us. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. 
amen and amen. This is a key. It is a symbol of really what God says that we have, and we're going to be in a passage today in Matthew chapter 16, where Jesus says to Peter, I have given you the keys to the kingdom. And so if you'll turn with me now to Matthew 16, we're going to learn through this passage what Jesus is trying to teach us. And he talks about the king's keys of the kingdom, and more specifically, once you enter the door of Jesus Christ and walk into a relationship, a fellowship with him, you are then given kingdom business to do. God didn't save us so that we could just go directly to heaven. For some people, that may be true, like the thief on the cross. But for many of us, the reason why God has left us here is to grow us up strong so we can be light and darkness so we can shine like Goshen uh, in Egypt, if you will. We need to live a life where we are actually having an effect on the evil in this world. And whatever kingdom business the disciples had, the keys to the kingdom that God gave Peter, he gave to the disciples, he gave to us. And that is the authority to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ in his name. Jesus declared that the gates of hell the gates of death, the gates of Hades would not prevail against the advancement of the church of Jesus Christ on the earth. And those gates are those locked doors that the enemy has placed. Oftentimes it's around people, places, and things in our life. But these gates or these doors can be accessed by believers who use the key to the power of the gospel because the gospel authority is invested in every believer who has received the gospel. Having said that, go with me now to Matthew 16. We'll pick it up at verses 13 and we'll read through 19 or so. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15, but what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? In verse 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. So here we are in this chapter. It's actually uh, 18, my, my bad. Uh, chapter 18, verse 16. And Jesus is asking to the disciples, who do men say that I am? And then the disciples say, well, some people say you're John the Baptist. Some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're one of the prophets of Jeremiah. Who do, who do you say I am? And then what happens? Peter steps up and he speaks and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Question, what about you? What do you say about Jesus Christ? Who do you say that he is? You see, every person will have to answer this question here or in eternity. So you must answer the question. Who do you say Jesus is? How do you respond to the Jesus who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to Father God except through me. Jesus says, I am the only door. It's still open. Come on in to a relationship with me. Who do you say Jesus Christ is? A prophet? A teacher? Peter said, you are the Christ, which means the anointed one, the son of God. Friends, every man, every woman, every boy and every girl will stand before almighty God and their eternity will be based on how they answer this question right here. What are you going to do with Jesus? And so Jesus says back to our dear brother, Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was revealed not by you, but by man. This was revealed to you by man. And I want you to notice, and we're in Matthew 16, verse 17, he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. And he goes on to say, It was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. Question, has God revealed who Jesus is to you? 
Has God revealed who Jesus is to you? If you seek him, you will find him. If you invite him, he will come. Jesus is seeking you, and he will be revealed to everyone who calls on the name of Jesus. And in verse 18, I tell you, listen to how Jesus responds now to Peter. He says in 16, 18 of Matthew, he says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. This is significant because Jesus is saying in this moment, you are Peter. You are stepping into the calling that I always had for you. You see, when Jesus relates to you, he doesn't relate to you simply with regard to who you are and where you are now. He does that. But because he's the God of the past, present, and future, he can see who you are becoming. And so he relates to you not just based on now, but based on the future because he knows what he's going to do in your life. You may say, what does this mean when he says you are Peter? Well, let me ask you the question. Does anyone remember the first encounter that Jesus had with Simon Peter when they first met? You remember in John chapter 1 when Andrew goes to get his brother Simon Peter and brings him to Jesus, and they spend a day with Jesus. In John 1, verses 41 and 42, listen to what it says. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. Verse 42, this is John 1, 42, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, here it is, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. So when Simon first meets Jesus, Jesus tells him who he is and who he will become. He says, you are Simon, son of John. Now, I don't want you to forget this. But he says, you will be Peter. Cephas translated Peter. Peter means rock. And now, what's really cool about this is Jesus knows in meeting him for the first day who he is now, but who he also is going to be later after Jesus works on him for about three years. Jesus knows who you are now, but he also knows who you're going to be after he works on you for a few years. He's going to do something in your life, and you're going to go through some difficulties, some temptations, but when you come out, you are going to be at a place where your purpose is elevated beyond what you can even see in your own life right now. And this is what Jesus is trying to teach us, because when he first meets him on the first day, he says, you are, but you will be. I'm here to tell somebody that you are, but one day you will be that God is going to take you from where you are now to where you're going to be because he sees the divine purpose he has in your life. You just got to stick with Jesus. You see, when you stick with Jesus, Jesus walks with you, talks with you, fights for you, and through that time of your discipleship and your equipping, through that time of hanging out with Jesus, things are being transmitted to you that you don't even know is happening. And that's exactly what goes on. So in John 1, he says, you are Simon, you will be Peter. But now we get to Matthew 16, and it's almost time for Jesus to go to his crucifixion and resurrection three years later. And he says, after this confession in Matthew 16, 18, he says, you are Peter. Wow. For the first time, Jesus ever called Simon Peter. Now, I know this because I went back and I looked at every red letter in every gospel. And while you'll see Simon Peter, Simon Peter, and people say, Peter, it's the the writers who are saying it, not Jesus. Jesus said it the first time in John 1. He didn't say it again until Matthew 16. You are Simon, you will be called Peter, and now he fulfills exactly what he predicted. He says, you are Peter. Can I tell y'all something? 
There is power in the second name that God gives you. Your purpose is in the second name that God gives you. Your authority is invested in the second name God gives you. The first name gets you there, but the second name takes you there. God will move you from sinner to your second name, saint. Not in your first position on the earth, unsaved, but in your second position, saved. Not in your first birth through your mother, natural birth, but in your second birth through your heavenly father being born again of the spirit. The power is in your second position. The power is in your second name. I thank God for the Old Testament, which is the first testament, but I praise him even more for the second testament, which is the New Testament. God says that the gospel goes to the Jew first, but thank God it comes to the Gentile second. There's power in the second position. Power in the law, yes, but more power in the gospel of grace. Something about that second name, something about that second position. Yes, the first heaven and the first earth is nice, but it will pass away. But one day, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. That's the second one. My physical body, the first one's all right. My second one's going to be awesome. The first death, got to go through it. But praise God, because I was born again, I don't have to go through the second death because I was born a second time. See, your power and your authority is released on the earth when you place your faith in Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, Abraham wasn't Abraham. He was Abram. His purpose was Abraham. See? Jacob was Jacob, but his purpose came after he wrestled with the angel and became Israel. You are known as servant, but no longer just servant, but now son. There is a change that takes place when you come into a relationship with the Lord, and everything changes when you place your faith in Christ. And then when you get back to the passage, you get to verse 19, and I just want you to notice that once Peter makes the confession... Then Jesus tells him the name and the authority now that he can live in connected to his purpose. Verse 19, Matthew 16, 19 says this, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, keys signify authority. And he says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. See, believers, we must hold on to the fact that we can activate our faith and our authority by walking in the power of the gospel by faith and not by sight. Practically speaking, what locked areas has God given you authority in and over that you must now access by activating your faith? You see, the only way that the key works is if you work the key. A key on a ring has no power. An unused key means nothing. There's no purpose. The purpose comes when you take the key and you turn the key. Can you write in there, turn the key? Can you type in there, take the key, turn the key? Because the key by itself has no power. You have to activate it. In other words, there's got to be a connection between the key and the lock, between the key card and the lock between the key code and the lock. Without the connection, there's no power. You have to activate it. And there must be a connection between the key and the lock itself. If it just stays in your pocket, it has no power. There are a lot of believers that has their faith in their pocket. They carry the faith with them, but they don't activate the faith. They don't live with their faith. They just have it in their pocket, pull it out when they think they need it. There are a lot of Christians this way today. And likewise, friends, if you have the keys of the kingdom, you need to know that if you don't activate it, it won't act. If you don't take it and turn it, there will be no power. 
There are a lot of believers who do not have power because all they want to do is carry their faith in their pocket like a badge, like a license, like a credit card. They keep it in their pocket. It has no power. And if you're a believer, you have to take the key and then you have to turn it because the key by itself means nothing. But now Peter's ready to receive the keys. He couldn't handle the keys in his first state. He couldn't handle the keys before he made his confession with his mouth. But now that he's made his confession with his mouth, now that he began to step up and stand into who he was in Christ, now that his belief was sure, Jesus then says, now you're ready. I give you the keys to the kingdom. This is so important because you got to understand that we have the master key, and that is the gospel. The gospel is the key. The gospel has the key to, to save human souls. The gospel has the key to heal human hearts. What would have happened if that 18-year-old shooter had received the gospel. The power of the gospel can avert a tragedy. What would have happened if Putin received the gospel? The gospel can change a human heart. The power of the gospel cannot be stopped. The power of the gospel can go into any area that Satan has put a gate around. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. Listen, gates don't move. Gates are set. You got the key to the gate. He puts gates around areas in our life. He puts gates around people, places, and things. And Jesus says, the power of the gospel is the key. And you walk in the authority of the gospel, and you can go into places where even demons trod. Watch God turn things around in the midnight hour when you walk in the authority of the gospel. So then how do you activate your faith? How do you take and turn the key? Three ways. Number one, walk in your authority. Chapter 16, verse 17. Walk in your authority. He says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Now remember, you gotta, you gotta remember what we said before. In John 1, verse 42, I believe it was. Blessed are you, Simon, son of who? Son of John. Now, he says, you will be called, you are Peter. And now what do you say? Blessed are you, Simon. Son of Jonah. See, the first name came from his father, John. The second name comes from his heavenly father, Jonah. Not the same word in the Greek. John and Jonah are different. Jonah was that prophet from the Old Testament. Do you remember his story? Well, we're in Matthew 16. If you go back and look at verse 1, it says that the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted to test Jesus, and they were asking him for a sign. And Jesus said, and you can read it on your own sometimes, Jesus said, the only sign you're going to get is the sign of Jonah. So the whole context up until this point is they're testing Jesus, and he says he's going to give them a sign, the sign of Jonah. What's the sign of Jonah? Well, Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights, Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. What he's saying is that the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when you place faith in that, that's the gospel. The only sign you're going to get is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You're wicked, always looking for a sign. Only sign you're going to get is the sign of the gospel, the sign of Jonah. But here's what's interesting. God told Jonah to go to the Gentiles in a place called Nineveh to preach his mercy. Jonah ran the other direction. He didn't want to do it. But God always gets his man. Before it was over, he became filet of fish. Got thrown over the boat, and now he's in the water, and then this fish comes, big fish, and swallows Jonah whole, and now Jonah is still alive in the belly of the fish until he comes to a place of repentance and then the fish vomits him out, and guess where he goes? 
he goes to Nineveh to preach the mercy of God. God always gets his man, and guess what? God's got all the time in the world because he's above time, so take your time. Go on your little cruise, but when you're ready, we're going to go do what I purpose for you to do, okay? And so Jonah does what? Even though he didn't want to go to the Gentiles, even though he didn't want to go to Nineveh, what did he do? He preached mercy, and guess what happened in Nineveh? They all repented, which is exactly probably what he didn't want. But they did. They all repented. So now when you see Jesus saying this to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, only thing you're going to get is the sign of Jonah. And now he says to Simon, Simon, not son of John, your human father, son of Jonah, his purpose. Like Jonah, you will now go to the Gentiles and you will preach the gospel. Wow. Once he confesses Jesus, Jesus says, now you can step into your second name. Now you can step into your purpose. You will be like Jonah, and Peter's name is Rock. And he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. I meaning I'm the one that's going to build it. My meaning I'm the owner of it. I'm the builder and the owner. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Is the rock Peter? Well, that is his name. Could it be his confession? Well, that's rock solid. But we know that Jesus also is the solid rock, the firm foundation. And in Peter's letter, he calls us all living stones. But I want you to see how powerful this truly is. That Jesus is saying, you have the keys of the kingdom because now you're going to live out your purpose, which is the gospel. And like Jonah, Peter, you know what? You were a fisherman. And now I'm calling you the son of one who was swallowed by a fish. John, Peter, you were a fisherman, but remember I told you in Luke 5, one day you will be fishers of men? Jonah, that's who you're the son of now. Go do it. Fishers of men. And we all know in Acts chapter 2, that's exactly what happened. This was fulfilled. Now Peter was a fisherman, all right. But he was a fisherman, not in the father's business of Jonah, of John, but in the father's business of Jonah, taking the power of the gospel that can walk into a Nineveh that is completely antithetical to everything and turn it on its head. Yes, God can save Putin with the gospel. And God can save the next shooter with the gospel. But we've got to be willing to go to the very people that we might be afraid of, that we might not like. Yeah, they were racist in Nineveh. No, he didn't want mercy to happen to him. But he went and did what God said, and he saw the power of God work through him. And the same is true. What would happen if Dylan Ruth received the gospel of Jesus Christ? What would happen if people came up alongside of him and loved on him? Maybe, just maybe that day, he wouldn't go into Mother Emanuel Church and start shooting up until he killed nine people while they were at a prayer meeting. Friends, I'm just simply saying this. The gospel has power, but we must, number one, walk in our authority. Take your key with you, which is the power of the gospel. Take the power of the gospel to work. Take it to your meetings. Take it to your school. Take it to your community. Say, Lord, as I walk into this meeting, I take the power of the gospel with me. I'm going to walk in the authority of the gospel. How do you activate your faith? You do it in three areas, three ways. Number one, walk in your authority. Number two, talk in your authority. Speak what you believe. Romans 8 says this. Check out verses 8 and 10 from Romans, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 and 10. Listen to what it says. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Verse 9, Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. 
Say it. Talk in your authority. If you can't say it, maybe it's because you really don't believe it. Peter confessed with his mouth what he believed about Jesus. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets. But what do you say? And guess what? He was speaking to the disciples, but only one responded, Peter. And that's the one the church was built on at the beginning. What would have happened if somebody else responded? Because he was talking to all of them, and all of them were speaking. And then when he says, well, who do you say I am? Peter's the only one who replied. Only Peter was the one upon which Jesus said he would build the church, actualized in Acts chapter 2. Maybe he said it because he was a talker. Maybe he said it because of his personality. He always fast at the mouth. Maybe. But I want you to notice that Jesus responded to Peter's confession of faith. You may wonder why you're, why you're not going to the next level spiritually. I don't know, but maybe you can ask yourself this question. Do I walk and do I talk in my authority that God has given me? Do you speak your confession with your mouth? Walk in your authority. Talk in your authority. Or do you complicate the message and confuse your own soul with your schizophrenic faith? Schizophrenic faith is that faith that says, I believe it with my heart, but my mouth is always declaring the opposite. How can you say you believe and then declare the opposite? If you want life, speak life. Don't speak death and expect life. That's schizophrenic. Don't speak defeat and expect success. That's schizophrenic. Don't speak negative and expect positive results. That's schizophrenic. Don't say God can heal, but then you limit his healing to what you understand based on the doctor's report. This doesn't mean you don't listen to the doctor or get the facts. It doesn't mean that you don't listen. But you still have to activate your faith. Because you don't need faith if you only believe the doctor. You don't need faith if you only listen to your accountant. You don't need faith if you only get advice from human beings. If you have doctors and lawyers and financial advisors and accountants and friends who give you advice only to listen to them and act according to them, then why do you even need God? <laughs> what are you praying for that you cannot already get on earth? Why even pray? And this is why Jesus steps in and goes, but now that you get the keys to the kingdom, I want you to know something, that you can now loose and bind and exceed the expectations that are limited by the earth. You, what you're doing, Peter, now, when, when you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, and what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you're doing is you are calling on heaven to unlock and to loose something on the earth. You're activating your faith by walking in your authority, by talking in your authority. You are calling for a miracle beyond science. When you bind and close the door on the earth that will take a, a heavenly move in order to lock it, then you're going beyond human potential. You are calling on heaven as your ultimate power and authority. In other words, there is an authority that supersedes science and technology and medicine and human governments and the law of the land. This authority is rooted in the power of the gospel. And Jesus is elevating Peter's faith by connecting heaven and earth. Not just loosing on earth, but in heaven. Not just binding on earth, but in heaven. You're bringing heaven's authority and power to bear on the earth. And if you don't believe it, then why do you pray? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on what? Earth, as it is where? In heaven. This is kingdom stuff. If you don't think you can bring heaven's power and authority to bear on the earth, then why do you pray? Prayer is an act of futility if you don't believe that we are bringing heaven to, to bear on the earth. 
We just need more mature and mighty believers who are bold enough to believe that there is a kingdom beyond this earthly realm. And we are talking about how to activate it. We said walk in your authority, talk in your authority. Let me give you the final one before we get out of here. And that is this, fight in your authority. Because in this same chapter, 16, 18, he says the gates of hell will not overtake it. But then after all of this dialogue with Jesus, this moment, right, where he steps into his purpose, gets a second name, you are called Peter, son of Jonah, not, not son, like, okay, got it. All right, and you're going to be a fisher of men, and, 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 and you're going to bind, and you're going to loose. All of this happens, right? And you get to verse 21, and Jesus says, yeah, by the way, I'm going to have to leave you guys. Remember how I was talking about the whole three-day, three-night Jonah, death, burial, resurrection thing? Yeah, well, that's going to happen. <laughs> Peter's like, no, 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 it ain't going to happen. You ain't doing that. And check out verse 22. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Notice what Jesus says in verse 23. This is Matthew 16, 23. Jesus turned and said to Peter, now, the same Peter that he just said, I'm, I'm you know, you are Peter, and you're binding and loosing, right? <laughs> the same Peter. Just a couple verses later, that's what Jesus says. Jesus turns and says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. What? <laughs> on, didn't you just call me? <laughs> like, hold on. I, I'm in my purpose. <laughs> Maybe that's why I felt proud enough to rebuke you because, you know, I'm in my purpose. You told me, right? And that's the problem, right? We get into our purpose and pride will take over. God will anoint you before you know it. You think you're the, the stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so he said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. You see, just because Peter was called didn't mean Peter was ready. <laughs> just because you're called doesn't mean you're ready. Some people are like, I'm called by God. Okay, good, good. That doesn't mean you're prepared. Doesn't mean you're equipped, doesn't mean you're trained, doesn't mean you're discipled, it doesn't mean you've been battle tested, it doesn't mean you're disciplined, doesn't mean you're mature and mighty, that may take a minute. Even Jesus had to mature and grow in stature and in wisdom according to Luke chapter 140 and Luke chapter 2, 52. But what he's trying to show us here is that spiritual battle comes against our purpose. But it didn't for Jesus. Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. And he wasn't even going to let his, his, his disciple Jesus, his disciple Peter, who's moving into his purpose, stop that. Peter just didn't know. Let that pride step in. And he tells all of us, finally, be strong in the Lord and his, in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take a stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities. Walk in your authority, talk in your authority, fight in your authority against powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. See, Jesus was always being tested. And they wanted to test him early in that chapter. And he showed us that the power is in the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. What have we said? We've said a lot. But let me just review that you activate your faith in three areas. Walk in your authority. Talk in your authority. Fight in your authority. Walk. Talk. Fight. WTF. What the faith? What the faith? The faith is that I'm going to walk in my authority. I'm going to talk in my authority. And I'm going to fight in my authority. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Dr. Anderson, for that inspiring message. If this message inspired you, please tell your friends and your family members, and so they can be inspired by this message as well. If you made a decision today to follow Christ, or you want to know how to make that decision, or you have spiritual questions, text the words, fill me to 97,000, and we would love to help you as you work on your journey with Jesus. We are now going to go toward a time of giving in our service, and we want you to know we don't create services to obligate you to give to us. 
It is really for those of us who call Bridgeway home an opportunity to give to God because he's given so much to us. And one of the things we do with the resources that you give us is that we support outreaches literally around the world. And so we welcome you to watch this Missions Moment video where you will meet Sarah, who I have known since she was 18 months old and played in my house, and her husband, wow, she has a husband now, named Oso, and the work that they do in Mexico. Hi, Bridgeway, my name is Sarah. Hola, mi nombre es Abraham, mejor conocido como El Oso, y él es Lía, nuestro hermoso bebé. Y estamos aquí para darles gracias por lo que han hecho por nosotros, por su ayuda. Este, parte de lo que hacemos o lo que yo hago en Pucum, que es donde colaboramos, es trabajar con equipos, eh, llevarlos eh, a hacer ministerio, trabajos en la base, mantenimiento y cositas así que hacen falta. Así que muchas gracias por todo el apoyo que nos han brindado durante todo este tiempo. Uh, I, uh, with my, my role within the, the base is primarily with our school Kingdom Academy. So I help oversee the, the school uh, and I work primarily with the, the early education, making sure that the teachers and, and supervisors have the resources that they need, that they're running the, the system uh, correctly. Uh, and I'm also starting to work as, as well, uh, empowering the staff uh, through, through knowing their, their strengths. Uh, better. So thank you so much for uh, all of your, your support. Uh, it's a huge blessing for, for us to be able to, to, to do what we love to do and, and to serve, to serve uh, the body of Christ, to serve our, our community here. Uh, and it's all thanks to, to your generosity and, and your support. So thank you. Uh, we love you and we hope to see you in person someday soon. That is just one example of how Bridgeway Community Church is accomplishing our vision to reach our community, our culture, and our world for Christ. And if you'd like to support us in that, you can go to bridgeway.cc forward slash give, and you can give there, or you can use text to give, and the information for that is on your screen. Let's pray for our offering. Father, we are so grateful that you are a generous God who gives to us. Matter of fact, there are times you give to us before we even know we have the need. And so, Father, we pray that you will take these offerings that your people are going to give, regardless of the amount, and that you will continue to advance the kingdom of God to open doors in the world around us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. If you are new, this is your first time checking us out, uh, you can find out more information about us at bridgeway.cc and on that home page at the top there is a tab you can click and it's called new here and you can find out all sorts of information about us we re ask that you will like and subscribe to our bridgeway facebook page and to our youtube channel as well next week we have a guest speaker her name is lisa bryson and her message is titled when i cried to him the power of surrendered pain. Yes, I know. It sounds like a great message. I want to hear it now, but you will have to wait until next week. Bridgeway, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you, and may he give you his peace. Bridgeway, shalom until we meet again.